Hi, this is Peter Savage, and this is in, uh, David Moberg's theater, Intro to Theater class, and this is the Othello Discussion Board assignment. And um, a brief, uh, brief introduction to what I'll be doing. Um, I'll be doing um, Scene Two, or, excuse me, Act Two, starting with line two eighty-five. And at this part, Iago and Cassio are talking, and um, and before this, Cassio um, was um, shamed almost by Othello um, because Cassio um, was seen holding hands with his wife Desdemona, and Iago, who has been scheming this entire opera to be to be as much a thorn in the side of Othello as possible without Othello even knowing it, with think, still thinking that Iago is still his friend, still his counterpart. And Iago and Cassio are talking now, Iago is still trying to sweet talk him. And, um, and, he's, and he's telling him about how he could possibly get back into the good graces with the general, which, he, which inside he does not want him to do. So here is line 285. Yeah. As I am an honest man, I thought you had received some bodily wound. There is more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is an idle and most false imposition, oft got without merit and lost without deserving. You have lost no reputation at all, unless you repute yourself such a loser. What, man, there are ways to recover the general again. You are but now cast in this mood, a punishment, more in policy than in malice, even so as one would beat his offenseless dog to affright an imperious lion. Sue to him again, and he's yours. Cassio. I would rather sue to be despised than to deceive so good a commander with so slight, so drunken, and so indiscreet an officer. Drunken, I speak parrot. Squabbling, swagger, swear, and discourse, fushton with one's own shadow. O thou invisible spirit of wine, if thou hast no name to be known by, let us call thee the devil. Iago. What was he that you followed with your sword? What had he done to you? Cassio. I know not. Iago. Is it possible? Cassio. I remember a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. A quarrel, but nothing wherefore. Oh, that men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. That we should, with joy, pleasance, revel in applause, transform ourselves into s such beasts. Iago. Why, but you are not well enough. How, c how came you this way? It hath pleased the devil drunkenness to give place to the devil wrath. One imperfectness shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. Yeah. Come, you are too severe a morale. As the time, the place, the, and the condition of this country stands, I could hardly wish this had not so befallen. But since it is as it is, I meant it for your good. I will ask him my place again, says Cassio. I shall tell me, he shall tell me I am a drunkard. Had I as many mouths as Hydra, such an answer would stop them all. To be now a sensible man, by and by a fool, and presently a beast, oh strange. Every inordinate cup is unblessed, and the ingredient is a devil. Yeah. Come, come, good wine is a good familiar creature, if it be well used. Exclaim it no, no more against it. And good lieutenant, I think he, you think I love you. Cassio. I have well approved it, sir. I drunk. Mm -hmm. yeah. You or any man living may be drunk at a time, man. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. I may say so in this respect, for that he hath devoted and given up himself to the contemplation, mark, and denotement of her parts and graces. 
confess yourself freely to her, importune her help to help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt a blessed disposition, she holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband entreat her to split up, and my fortunes against any lay worth naming, this crack of your love shall grow stronger than it was before. Cassio says, you advise me well, Iago. I protest in the sincerity of love and honest kindness.